welcome our next presenter, Wendy Davis from Deeds Not Words. This is Annika, a college sophomore and one of our Deeds Not Words change makers. Last year, after she was sexually assaulted by a fellow student at school, she started missing classes and she fell behind. And then she, not he, was placed on academic probation. She's back on track now, but it almost derailed her dream of becoming a neuroscientist. Annika attends school and lives in Texas, where we were recently ranked the third worst state for women's equality. And that's not just bad for women. It's bad for the economy, and it's bad for all of us. These are the kinds of statistics that we see when women aren't equally represented in seat suites, in boardrooms, in chancellor's offices, and elected offices. And that's because if we're not present, our interests cannot be represented. At Deeds Not Words, we are aiming to change that. We are providing young women with an understanding of where the rooms of power are. What happens in those rooms? How do they sign up to speak in those rooms? And how can they be effective once they get there? They're using the power of their personal experiences, their personal narratives, to drive and advocate for gender equity today. Meanwhile, they're learning important, portable, long-term skills like critical reasoning, public speaking, project management, and organizing to form a pipeline of future leaders. We're proud of our work and theirs, but we cannot realize our dream of equitizing women in a state of 27 million people if we can't scale. And that's where you come in. Right now, we have 19 chapters on college and high school chapters around the state. And we have a plan to help scale those, to make them self-sustaining. Each one of those chapters right now costs us about $15,000 a year. And with your investment of $70,000, we will be able to bring on the staff and the tools so that we provide access for our students to an innovative fundraising platform, one where they will build upon an existing donor database and investors. And in the process, they'll be learning another important skill, how to raise a fund. It's our goal that each of our chapters would become self-sustaining in the next two years, giving us then those resources to start new chapters and begin to multiply our impact. Last month, Annika testified before a Senate committee hearing and watched as that committee voted unanimously to support a bill that she helped to write. Annika and the other young women that we work with represent a new generation of women, the generation that will be our next CEOs, our next chancellors, our next board presidents, our next elected officials, and yes, like Annika, our next neuroscientists. And one by one by one, with their passion, their work, and their dedication, and with your help, they are going to make sure that gender inequality is a thing of the past. Thank you. Thank you very much. Could you share a little bit more with us on how you're collaborating with other organizations on a local, uh, regional, national level? Yes, the work that our girls do crosses so many different sectors, from immigration to domestic violence to gender equity to reproductive rights. And there are some fab fabulous organizations here in Austin that are working in those intersections. And we work very collaboratively with them. We also just partnered with an organization here called Jolt Initiative to form something called Movement Mojetas, where we are creating a four-year deep dive leadership training of post-college graduate young women of color, hoping that they will become our future leaders in philanthropy, in elected office, and in the social justice world. Thank you. 
Of the, the $15,000 uh, cost per chapter, is that the same for college and high school? And can you give us a high level of what that covers? It's a little more expensive for our college chapters. And the reason for that is that every college chapter, we pay a college campus organizer who is a student on that campus. Um, it's a four month uh, amount of work for them and we pay them $2,500. We wanna make sure that if we're asking for that kind of commitment of time from them, that we're rewarding them financially so that they have the capacity to do it. Our high school chapters tend to be a little bit less expensive because to operate them, we have teachers, faculty members who serve in that capacity for us. The other costs that come in supporting our chapters come from our own staffing costs, the travel to and from. We have chapters all over the state as far away as the Rio Grande Valley and El Paso. And of course, bringing all of our students to the state capitol so that they have an opportunity to advocate, that comes at a cost as well. And that's where that $15,000 comes from. Wendy, you're almost out of time, but how are you tracking success or impact? We're tracking success in two different ways. One, the legislation that they pass. And I hope you notice on the slide that so far they've passed seven bills at the state level. They're on track to pass 12 more. They've passed local ordinances in two cities and on track in El Paso to pass another one upcoming. We also measure our success, not just in the results of what we see them achieve, but also in what we see with each of them individually. I cannot tell you how many have said to us, I've caught the bug, um, and how many have demonstrated that they understand, as one young woman said to me not long ago, I didn't think I had a story to tell, and now I know I do. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.